Hello my lovelies, welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys that are new, welcome. My name is Pinky and teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what I do. Welcome back my loves. For those of you guys returning, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. All right, my lovelies, here we are kicking off the new year. Happy New Year's to all of you guys. Let's look into your love life. Let's see what you guys can expect for this month of January going into February. For new love and old love, for those of you guys that are here for new love, and perhaps a few that are still curious or wanting to know about a past lover. All right, we're going to kick it off with Capricorn, as it is still Capricorn season. My lovely Capricorns, happy birthdays. If you guys are at the end of the spectrum, let's get into it. Let's see what Capricorn can expect for the remainder of the month going into February. Spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels, please step forward. Allow us to see, hear, sense, feel, receive the messages loud and clearly. For all zodiac signs, we're going to begin here with Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Give me three cards to represent new love, three cards to represent old flame. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you guys are interested in the 2024 predictions, you guys can find that video now. I'll probably tag it at the end of this video. If not, you can go to my channel and you'll be able to find it on there. So you guys can expect the themes you're going to be dealing with. Make sure to listen to your rising. That is um, more accurate. All right, here we go. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to new love and old flame. Three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go, Capricorn. All right, for new love, you have the Wheel of Fortune, Temperance, and the Fool card here. For old love, we have the Seven of Wands, the Ace of Cups, and the Knight of Wands. All right, Capricorn, in regards to new love, for those of you guys that are single, <laughs> you may not be single for very long. Now, the Wheel of Fortune is a representation of our luck about to change, right? It is a um, the balancing of scales. It is a representation of your luck actually taking an upswing. Now, when we look into new love, this can also represent Jupiter's energy. Uh, so for a lot of you Capricorns, Jupiter is going to be really highlighting uh, when it comes to romance and relationships. So for, so for some of you guys in the beginning of the, I want to say throughout January, but more so the beginning of the year, there's going to be an upswing in regards to relationship and romance. If those of you guys that maybe haven't been really dealing with anyone, um, that's quickly going to be changing uh, as it is representing, you know, again, we can't ignore Jupiter's transit that's going to be happening this uh, this year. So again, the Wheel of Fortune is a representation of your luck about to change. With temperance here, it's balancing that aspect of your life, right? The love life. And the full card, it is almost bringing this revamped energy, re-energized energy, a transmutation for some of you guys coming out of some type of healing, um, now, if you are currently dealing with someone, um, in regards to how they see you, they are seeing you at this point in time as the person that is meant for them. So if you've been dealing with someone for a while and they haven't really given you any type of commitment, Capricorn, that may be changing. Um, temperance is here bringing balance and it is also, um, it's almost getting to the, with the wheel of fortune, it's getting to the point of, um, almost like the process to be able to transmutate, right? When we're doing alchemy, um, that's what's coming through here with the two cups and the temperance, um, with the angel holding the two cups. It's almost like if it wasn't the right time at some point in time in your life, now it is an auspicious time where uh, something can actually become something concrete. There could be some type of higher elevation of commitment here. Um, for those of you guys that are single, like I said, uh, you may be uh, getting almost a, a revamp in your love life. It's gonna, you know, it's gonna definitely take flight 
it's going to be very exciting times for you guys. With temperance and the full, for some of you guys, you may be dealing with a Sagittarius or uh, for others of you, you could be dealing with a Aries. Um, we also have Taurus here. We have Leo as well. So it just depends, but it is ultimately saying that there is definitely newness. There's new beginnings for you guys. And it's like like luck, sorry. It's like luck is finally striking, right? Um, for some of you guys, it is definitely highlighting uh, basically being lucky when it comes to love and romance um, for, the, for the coming months. Like I said, for a lot of you guys, obviously we're looking into January going into the beginning of February, but with that Jupiter transit, uh, I, I can't help to notice that it's definitely going to bring a lot of you guys, especially those of you guys that are females. Um, it could be that you're experiencing a Jupiter return um, in your birth chart, and that can symbolize a, basically the partner that you're going to be marrying. Uh, so a lot of momentum is happening here. Now, when we're looking into the old love, we have the seven of wands, the ace of cups and the knight of wands. How they feel about you, they feel that you've pushed them or that you've guarded them or perhaps even blocked them from being able to see what's going on in your life. Yet there is still love there and there is hope for some type of reconnection. Now, if you are on the spectrum of those of you guys that are hopeful or waiting to hear some type of message, you may actually hear from them um, the end, more so the end of this month, uh, as I do see a reaching out and it's a reaching out with hopes or intent um, that you may still be interested in them or that you may still hold feelings the way they feel for you. Uh, it's clear that they have not uh, been able to move on. Uh, if you guys did end in uh, not so great um, terms, I feel like they're having remorse about that and that may be why you hear from them. There is a desire to kind of, you know, create some type of mending, uh, create some type of what I'm hearing is if it must be done, uh, let it be done in a graceful way. So again, that's the reason why I'm saying if you guys didn't end uh, perhaps in very good terms. Um, they may come back around because they're wanting to, they don't want to be carrying any type of remorse or regret. So uh, that may be the reason why you hear from them. Okay, Capricorn. All right, my lovelies, moving on. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius, Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of January, 2024, going into February. Give me three cards for new love, three cards for old flame, three cards for new love, three cards for old flame, Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you guys are interested in any of the books that we have, any journals or the Manifest Your Destiny book, you can find all of that on the description links below. If you guys are interested in personal consultations or any type of uh, spell work, you can find all of that on the description box below. You guys, please be careful of scammers. Um, there is tons of people pretending to be me on different social medias. Please be wary of that. Um, I cannot tell you guys how many times I've heard people waiting for some type of consultation or some type of appointment um, thinking that they had made payment to me and they were dealing with other people. If you guys place an order or make some type of payment, if it is not connected to the official pinky doll or it's not connected to myself, if you follow my social medias, you know um, all of those are connected. So if it's foreign, it has a weird name or it's a guy's name, it's not me, you guys, okay? Please be mindful of that. All right, Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go. Let's see what's going on with you, Aquas. All right, for new love, we have the Eight of Wands, the Empress, and the Ten of Cups. For old love, we have the Three of Cups, the Chariot, and the Knight of Swords. Okay, so in regards to new love, Aquarius, I feel like for a lot of you guys, you're going to start to pick up momentum. Those of you guys that have been dealing with a person for quite a while, I feel like you're going into this... Oh, and by the way, Aquarius, you have the um, 
the Pluto <laughs> transformation, right? Going into your sign. So for a lot of you guys, you're really thinking about longevity. You're thinking about um, creating something that is long lasting, you know, creating something that has to do with, you know, not just you and your partner, but thereafter. Um, so a lot of major momentum and changes are happening. I feel like for a lot of, especially those of you guys that are on the spectrum of feeling like uncertain about the future, I feel you guys are going to jump into it wholeheartedly. For a lot of you guys, you're going to pick up the momentum. For some of you guys, you may even kind of rush into some type of commitment. So if you are on that, um, uh, on that degree, make sure to be cautious. You know, you don't want to run before you learn to walk. Um, but it, if it is something that you've been maybe juggling or perhaps kind of pondering about uh, for quite a while, now it's the time to actually jump in and do it wholeheartedly. Eight of Wands, definitely very quick momentum, a lot of intensity, a lot of passion with the Empress, the desire, right? It is everything to do with abundance and abundance in completion form with the 10 of cups here. So it is the having the desire or the want for longevity, the happily ever after. Uh, again, I feel like for a lot of you guys, you may feel like you're being, I, I don't want to say you're feeling rushed into commitment. I don't want to say that. What I'm feeling is kind of like a world with romance. Um, and again, keeping in mind that you Aquarius are experiencing the Pluto transit, um, and what that means is that obviously it's going to sit in your sign for the next coming, you know, 15, 16 years or so. What does this mean? It means that there is a lot of transformation that's happening. However, I do want to caution you guys. Pluto does have a tendency of bringing people that are attracted to us in a bit of an obsessive way. So again, if you've been pondering, should you want some type of commitment, take it slow. If you've been dealing with this for a while, it may be the time where you decide, fuck it, I'm jumping in and I'm doing it and good for you. But if you are more so on the spectrum of just dealing with someone, make sure that you don't kind of like you don't rush it because it feels like a whirlwind romance where everything is like beautiful and perfect and you just kind of go with it. Um, so I do want to caution that aspect about Pluto's energy. It does have a tendency of bringing to us people that can have a bit of obsessive behaviors. Okay. Now, if you're fine with that, well, then good luck, <laughs> but, um, just be cautious about that. Now, when it comes to those of you guys that are single, I do see a bit of a whirlwind romance coming through for you guys. I usually see this with the lover's card. I don't see the lovers, but I do see the empress and the empress is a very sexual energy card. So again, I feel like you guys are going to be dealing or someone's going to be coming into your life where it's going to feel um, like it's unexpected. It's very sudden and the connection and the sexual attraction is off the charts. Um, and I do see for a lot of you guys, this actually does have the potential for something long-term. Now, when we're talking about past relationship with you, with the three of cups here, the chariot and the knight of swords, I feel like the person that you were dealing with in the past, um, could have had, uh, insecurity issues. And I feel like one of their biggest issues was that either dealing with the fact that they felt like at some point you were stepping out of the relationship perhaps, or perhaps they felt threatened whenever they came across someone that they felt had more qualities or had more attractive qualities, I should say, that they felt threatened. So there's a lot of insecurity, insecurity issues going on there. But I feel like um, if it was you, the one that stepped out of the connection, Aquarius, I feel like there was this sudden you know, what's the word I'm looking for? There's going to be this sudden urge from them to actually reach out. And the reason why they're trying to reach out to you, and again, this is more inclusive to those that um, the partner was the one that was enter entertaining other people. <coughs> I feel like they had options. And now it almost seems like you are resurfacing or there's something about you that they are either hearing about or that they see you on social media or that they see that you are not falling apart the way they thought you would. 
Um, but there's almost this like resurfacing of wanting to reach out to you, but more so because they want to show or prove to themselves that they can get, that they can have you again. Um, so if you do hear from them, which more than likely the majority of you guys will, my advice is keep it pushing. I feel like they're only being drawn or reaching out only because they feel like there is this sudden urge, not urge, sorry, sudden glow up that you're going to be experiencing or that people are going to, like you're going to be doing the most Aquarius. And I feel like this is really going to draw them in. Um, and you don't want that, right? If the person wasn't there for you at your worst, why the hell would you want them there at your best? You get what I'm saying? So keep it pushing, Aquarius. All right, moving on here. Let's go into Pisces. Let's see what's going on with Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Give me three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. Pisces, another of the signs that is having major shakeups and transformations. I'm sure all of you guys are already experiencing that. I have two Pisceans in my family, and let me tell you, they are experiencing a lot of craziness, and I'm sure if you are relating, take a deep breath. Sometimes that's important to remind ourselves that it is passing. It's not forever, right? Nothing is forever. Breathe through it. <laughs> All right, Pisces, let's see what's going on. Three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. Pisces, sun, moon, rising, Venus. All right, Pisces, we have the nine of swords, the ace of cups, the nine of wands. In regards to old flame, we have the nine of wands, four of swords, and the king of swords. Okay, so when it comes to relationships um, or the new person that you're currently dealing with, the Nine of Swords does bring to me a lot of anxiety in regards to love. There is a lot of issues that you may be dealing with right now, Pisces. And again, for some of you guys, it's not even in regards to the specific relationship. It has more to do with how you viewed or how you perceived love to be. There is a change that's happening. There is something that you're being forced to see or accept or deal with when it comes to romance. But I feel like it has not a lot to do with the person you're dealing with. It has more to do with yourself. So what I'm getting is almost like, you, I'll give you as an example, people that have a tendency of romanticizing relationships, right? And the beauty of it when it's first beginning, right? You guys are obsessed over each other. Everything's fine and dandy. Everything's amazing. Um, and then once you're challenged, it's like your perception of that person completely falls apart or the perception of what they thought you were completely falls apart. So again, it's going to resonate for everyone very differently, but I feel like you are being confronted with your idealism when it comes to relationships, whether it's with your partner, um, whether you've been dealing with someone for a while and you seen certain things or certain qualities about them that you'd like for them to change. But then now you're kind of being forced to realize, hey, you know what? I've been dealing with this person for two years. They keep telling me they're going to change. But where is the effort? You know, where is the showing me? It's been two years already. So I feel you guys being less patient but the reason for that is because you've been patient enough at this point it's like am I doing too much am I giving too much am I forgiving too much am I sacrificing myself am I pouring myself completely empty to pour on their cup that type of energy so this can correlate in regards to again keeping in mind Saturn is in your sign Pisces so for some of you guys you're realizing that the effort and energy is just not worth it at this point. With the nine of wands, it's not that you're giving up. It's more so that they've pushed you to that limit. Um, because Saturn is kind of like the rude awakener, right? Um, I'm beat and I'm battered and I am exhausted and I'm just completely drained because I'm the one carrying the relationship. And then Saturn shows up and it's like, what are you getting in return? Because if you're not getting anything, not even some type of effort, right? Saturn is the effort planet. 
not even the effort, then at this point, you're just wasting your time and time is valuable to Saturn, right? So again, I feel like for a lot of you guys, it's going to be in very different spectrums, but I feel the the theme here is definitely realizing, is this what you want? And if it's not, you guys are walking away from that. If you're currently dealing with someone new, I feel like you're paying more attention to the red flags and you're not allowing yourself to sacrifice no longer. It's like if this person doesn't meet the expectations or at least the qualities that I'm looking for in a partner, I'm just not wasting my time. Um, and again, Saturn does that. You know, Saturn reminds us we're not going to be here forever and time is valuable. Now, when it comes to past lover, the Ten of Wands with the Four of Swords, how they were feeling about you, they felt overwhelmed. Um, they felt, for some of you guys, it could be that they haven't heard from you in a bit or they haven't heard about you. And that's what's creating anxiety and stress because they're not really knowing what's going on in your life. Now, for others of you, if you've been like, uh, if you've blocked them or if you've gone, um, completely MIA from like social media and stuff like that. I feel like they're looking into you or wanting to look into you only because they're not getting any type of feedback. Have they moved on? No, but I don't see them taking any type of course of action to reach out or communicate with you. All right, my lovelies, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Aries. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Three cards for new love. Three cards for old flame. Aries. Another of the signs that is uh, definitely going to experience a lot of changes this year. We have the South Node in Libra and the North Node in Aries. So Aries, a lot of transformation for you guys. Okay, it's too many. We're going to put them back and see if they want to show up. All right, Aries. Three cards for new love. Three cards for old flame. One more. Okay, here we go. All right, Aries. You have the Queen of Cups, the Ace of Swords, and the Hanged Man. When it comes to old love, you have the Ace of Pentacles, the Two of Pentacles, and the Two of Cups. Okay, so Aries, what I'm seeing is and this is um, something that I definitely foreseen in the 2024 predictions. Aries, I'm going to really, really in encourage you guys to dare to be vulnerable this year <laughs> when it comes to love and romance. When we're talking about new love in regards to how they see you, the Queen of Cups with the Ace of Swords is someone that is capable to really tap into your vulnerability or the feminine energy doesn't matter if you're masculine or feminine um you're really able to tap into your feminine energy as well as not be not see yourself as weak because of it but see yourself more assertive because you're listening to your intuition do you see what i'm saying so there is people that have a tendency of believing right that being vulnerable or tapping into feminine energy, the receptive energy, right? The one that hears, the one that, that listens, uh, the one that is compassionate. People often, especially people with insecurities, often see this as a weakness. And you could most definitely be compassionate, be warm, be patient yet still be assertive in what it is that you want and you expect in relationships. And this makes you more of a valuable asset. Why? Because knowing your worth is not going to allow you to settle for anything less than what you deserve. And that makes you more valuable than people that are dealing with people that really have no self-worth or that make it easy for other people because they're pick me girl or pick me boy. Um, do you get what I'm saying? So what they're telling me here is when it comes to new love, if you're able to tap that, and that's definitely one of the things that were, you know, shown and was told to you in the predictions. 
um, especially because your North Node is in your sign. So Queen of Cups is that of being compassionate. Again, like I said, feminine energy with the Ace of Swords yet um, being assertive, being concise, being direct. And in that, you're going to see a different type of response. And what I mean by that, it's going to bring to you partners that are more valuable than the type of partners you've dated in the past, right? It's kind of like when you start to deal with people that are more high value uh, than those that, you know, are in their dark or shadow aspect. Um, and it's going to completely change how you view relationships or even how you experience love. Um, major message for you guys. Now, if you are currently dealing with someone at the moment, Queen of Cups with the Ace of Swords is, again, how they feel about you. They're realizing or they're coming to the realization that it is you who they want, that they're, they're, they are attracted and pulled towards you because of your independence, because of your assertiveness. Um, but I feel like they're starting to see or they will begin to see that more gentle aspect of you, the more vulnerable aspect. And that's really going to change their perspective of you completely. They are going to see you in a higher regard. They're going to see you as high value partner. Okay. So don't be surprised if they all of a sudden want to make it official or all of a sudden, um, want a, a higher elevated commitment because they are being shown this aspect of you that perhaps you've protected for a very long time. But in doing so, you kind of keep people at arm's length. And I feel like that's going to be coming down and they are definitely going to be more drawn towards you. Now, when we talk about old partner, for a lot of you, I am seeing a partner from the past that perhaps dropped the ball or perhaps um, didn't want a serious committed relationship is coming back around. Yes, you guys, I'm seeing that they are coming back around and they are ready. They are willing. They're going to tell you, Aries, what is it going to take for you to take me back? Do you want the ring or do you want to move in? They are willing to put in the work and not just say it, but back it up. They are, it's almost like they are realizing you were my destiny this whole time. And I was so oblivious to it. But this time around, they are going to be willing. Now, if you're in the spectrum of those that are wanting to hear from an ex-partner, when they do reach out, because they definitely will, when they reach out, I want you to remember your worth, Aries. I want you to remember that you deserve what you want and be brutally honest when it comes to that. Okay. Don't be okay. If the partner wants to reach out and casually see you No, if what you're wanting is commitment, now is the time to speak up and say, Hey, we're not revisiting or we're not going back to what it was unless there is a higher elevated commitment here. And if you're not willing to do that, then I'm just not interested anymore. Remember, time is of the essence in this in this sphere of time at this point in time in life. So again, um, don't be shy about asking or demanding what it is that you deserve. All right, my lovelies, moving on. Let's see what's going on with Taurus. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Three cards for new love. Three cards for old flame. Let's see what's going on with my lovely Taurus. If you guys are not subscribed, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. Make sure to check out our new podcast. We have more episodes coming for you guys. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with you, Taurus. All right. In regards to new love, we have the Eight of Cups, Knight of Swords, and the Ten of Swords. Okay, Taurus. If you are dealing with someone and it's just not working out, stop holding on, stop making excuses, stop trying to make it work, okay? The reason I'm saying this with the Ten of Swords, it's time for you to really accept the reality of things. And through this, are you going to be able to experience 
new opportunities or people coming into your life that are more worthy of you, okay? That's very important. Now, if you are currently dealing with someone and you feel like they've been a bit detached or perhaps they've gone MIA for a couple of days, they don't text you and then they casually text you and it's they're very like casual about it, like, oh, how was your day? Without really explaining where the hell they've been the past two days. Um, the reason why this is happening, Taurus, is because you're being guided to take off, I, I shouldn't say guided, you're being encouraged to take off the rose glasses and to see things for what they really are. And the reason for this is because the universe is trying to bring to you um, something much more worthy and deserving of you. And you can really embrace that because you're not making room for the newness, okay? Now, for those of you guys that are or have been single for a bit, you guys are moving on from this energy of looking towards the past. You're moving on from uh, perhaps even reminiscing about the past and thinking or wondering, you know, what could have gone differently. I feel like at this point, you are coming out of this understanding that it was ne necessary, that it was necessary for you to be true to yourself, to be honest with yourself. And though it, you may have felt like it took you a bit to heal, you're coming out of this much more stronger Taurus and much more assertive when it comes to relationships, when it comes to what you're willing to deal with and what you're not willing to deal with. And the great news here is that being single is finally coming to a conclusion for a lot of you guys, especially those of you guys that are between um, the middle degrees of Taurus. Now, when we talk about old love Taurus, we have the full card, the moon and the four of wands here. So for a lot of you guys, I feel like there is, and I, again, I feel like the newness energy is definitely something that obviously we're in January. This energy is kind of embracing everyone right now, but with the full card and the moon, you could have felt fearful about embracing new beginnings. Um, and the reason was because for some of you guys, you're coming out of a marriage that was very, very like toxic or very painful. For some of you guys, you may still currently be going through like divorce proceedings or uh, separation and coming to having to be on the same page, uh, whether it be through kids sake or whether it's to be amicable towards each other. And I feel like this really really has put you on this path of internalizing what you experienced and taking that as a lesson so that you no longer ever be put through that or be willing to put up with that, okay? So for a lot of you guys, it's going to be resonating differently, but I feel that the message here is there could have been fear of embracing new beginnings because of what you've experienced in the past. Um, the positive in this is that it's coming to its culmination. And whether you're ready or not, Taurus, uh, new beginnings are quickly approaching. And I feel like the more you ease into that and the more you're willing to be spontaneous and to embrace this energy, the more you're going to be surprised by the universe because it's going to start to bring to you and for a lot of you guys, it's going to bring to you a lot of what you would consider coincidence, but it has more to do with alignment and it has more to do with um, divine timing. Uh, so again, the more you embrace this, the quicker you embrace it um, and the less you resist it, the more you're going to experience really um, finding your path and finding your destiny and walking towards that destiny, towards the partner that is meant to be in your life, Taurus. All right, moving on here. Let's see what's going on here with Gemini. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, we have the Four of Swords here in regards to new love and old flame. Okay, so you have the Four of Swords, the Knight of Wands, and the Page of Pentacles when it comes to new love. 
I'm seeing for a lot of you Geminis, you are finally getting out of this energy of being either in solitude or being in the healing phase, right? Whatever healing meant to you, whether it was just that maybe you weren't on a conscious level, just not wanting to really be around people. It felt more like being like you were just drained emotionally, but it was a healing phase and a healing process that you were going through. You're finally coming out of that and you're becoming much more spontaneous. For a lot of you guys, you're going to feel almost like an, a, a, a kind of like a being shocked, um, pump, being pumped a lot of energy that you're going to be more proactive. For a lot of you guys, I'm seeing you guys be much more active, whether it's on the physical or whether it's just proactive when it comes to your love life. Now, for those of you guys that are currently dealing with someone, I do feel that there could be some distancing that's happening here. For some of you guys, you may be dealing with the person from a distance. For others of you, it could be that there is actual uh, distancing or the feeling of distancing. And I feel like this has been a process, but for a lot of you guys, you're coming to the realization that you want more. And whatever this person was capable of giving to you, it's not meeting your requirements or your necessities. And I feel like for a lot of you guys, you're coming to the understanding that you deserve better and you're walking away from this connection because I feel for some of you guys, you may be dealing with someone that is time restricted. So it could be someone that is legit working a lot or perhaps there is physical distancing and it's just, it's really hard right now for them. But the overall message here is, you know what it is that you want. You know what it is that you desire when it comes to a relationship and you're not going to settle anymore. So I see you guys knowing your worth and being like, okay, I'm not okay with you ghosting or I'm not okay with you guys not communicating or I'm not okay with you not putting time to actually hang out and have quality time. So because of that, I cannot continue this. So I see you guys more assertive when it comes to relationships. Now, if you are single and not dealing with anyone, that's not going to be like for too long. I do see you guys being more proactive in your love life. However, I do see that you start to raise your standards, Gemini, and good for you. Good for freaking you. Okay. Now, when it comes, excuse me, when it comes to old love, we have the 10 of cups, seven of swords and the king of swords. If you were dealing with someone that was a liar, a deceiver, or someone that just wasted your time, do not despair. <laughs> and the reason I say this is because I feel like they kind of, they were being busy or they were like really putting effort towards a relationship, but it's going to come out to the open, the reality of it. What do I mean by that? You know how there's sometimes situations where a person finds out that the partner you were with cheated on you and then they go on social media and it's almost like making fun but then that same person is attracted to your partner and then the partner goes with them i don't know why but that's the energy that it's giving me and now they're the ones that are they made fun of you at some point and it's like now they're the one that is put in that position that what I'm getting, I'm going to be honest, what I'm getting is like, oh, you know, so, so what happened now? Cause what I heard was, you know, you weren't, you weren't man enough or you weren't woman enough for them. And now they're doing the same thing to them. So it's like, what happened? Like you weren't woman enough or you weren't man enough either. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I feel like because that partner has a tendency of doing that, they are cheaters. They just cannot, cannot behave if their life depended on it. They don't know loyalty. So, but I feel like the person they were dealing with could have potentially either made fun of you or perhaps maybe even like, I don't know, may, maybe made it known to you that they were dealing with them. It's giving me very much like hater vibe type of energy. But now they're being like, now they're dealing with the situation you were dealing with, the situation that they judged you for. Now they're in that position. So what I'm saying, Gemini, is keep it pushing. This person is not worth it and does not deserve you. All right, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. 
Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Three cards for new love. Three cards for old flame. For the month of January 2024. I don't know why when I say the year, <laughs> I kind of like hesitate a bit because I feel like I'm going to say the previous year. Okay, still taking some time to get used to it, you guys. All right. All right, Cancer, we have the Eight of Wands, the Six of Swords, and the Ten of Cups. Finally, <laughs> finally, Cancer. Okay, so when we're talking about love and romance, Cancer, I'm seeing that the person that you're dealing with is definitely very attracted to you, and I feel like there is major momentum that's picking up here. Even if you felt like things weren't moving fast enough for some of you, especially if you were dealing with someone for a while, I feel like this is the month going into February is definitely the month that it becomes more committed or it becomes more official. I see them really, really dealing with like whatever fears they had going on and they're jumping like straight on and they're like, this is what I want and like, let's make it happen. Um, and for a lot of you guys, I did hear finally, you know, um, so there is a higher commitment that's happening here. But more so, I feel like a lot of you guys, especially those of you guys that are single and haven't been dealing with anyone, I feel like you're coming out of this energy of stagnation when it comes to love and romance or whether it was that you were just a magnet for losers. You're definitely starting to pull people that are more high quality, okay? High quality people, people that are with the same intentions, with the same dedication or with the same desire as you, uh, Cancer. So that this is going to start to pick up... Um, from now all the way to the beginning of February for some of you guys. Uh, and you may be dealing, especially those of you guys that are planning on traveling sometime between February, March, even April. I see that there's a connection that happens here that could potentially meet someone or a partner while traveling um, or while taking a road trip or something like that. Um, or for some of you guys, it could be that you are uh, going to some type of destination that could be connected to work and finance. Um, but I definitely do see, again, like I said, higher quality people coming into your life. Now, if you are dealing with someone, like I said, I do see commitment coming through for some of you guys. Now, when we talk about past lovers, you have the Justice card, the Knight of Pentacles, and the Ace of Cups. Okay, so what they're showing me here, Cancer, is... You're going to start to hear or experience things that are happening with your ex-partner or with the old flame. Um, and I feel for a lot of you guys, it could have been a situation where the partner was like highly commitment phobe and they would even tell you or go as far as telling you that they would never marry or they would never commit. And I feel like sometime... Uh, sometime between the end of January, beginning of February, for some of you guys, it's getting the news that they are actually committed or that they are actually getting married. And there is going to be this energy, right, of fear, fear that has more to do with like comparison. And I'm going to tell you, Cancer, there is no point in comparing yourself to the person that they are currently now dealing with. Because sometimes it has nothing to do with the person. It has more to do with the with the partner, right? Um, when they're ready, they're ready. And it has nothing to do with, you know, it's timing, basically. So I don't want you to go and spiral down this, you know, uh, energy of comparison or even doubting or fearing like you could have done things differently. If anything, I feel like you should be thankful and grateful that you're not going to be dealing with someone that um, really didn't want to give you what you were desiring, cancer. And by all means, from here on out, whenever someone tells you, well, in a relationship, I'm not looking for this. If that is something very important to you, cancer, completely walk out of that, okay? This is not the year for you to like meet people halfway. This is the year where people either meet your expectations or meet your requirements or the effort that you expect from the partner, or close the chapter really quick, okay? All right, my lovelies, moving on here. Let's see what's going on here with Leo. Oh, we got the justice card coming out here. Leo, sun, moon, rising, Venus. For some of you Leos, you may actually be dealing with the Libra that's coming in. <clears throat>
Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. I see you guys in much, I see you guys much more stronger and more assertive when it comes to relationships and when it comes to partnerships. If you guys have been on the spectrum of those of you guys that have been single for quite a while, I feel like between the month of February and March, that's the time frame they're giving me between February and March, um, there is almost an ending cycle or a closing cycle that is going to bring to you new beginnings. So sometime between February and March, there is almost this revamped energy. Um, if you felt like maybe you were stuck when it comes to like relationships, maybe you felt stuck, maybe you felt like uh, perhaps people were even messing in your love life. That's not going to be the case anymore, Leo. I'm seeing you guys become much more empowered. And through your empowerment, um, you're going to be much more attractive to those around you. So I see more, what I'm seeing here is that there is a balancing of your love life. Um, again, like I said, specifically for those that have been single for quite a while, I feel you guys becoming much more empowered, more confident. And this confidence is going to make you much more attractive to those that are around you. So I see more people uh, connecting or coming towards you. Yeah, here's another thing. Um, what I'm seeing, uh, Leo, is you guys are going to be, you're going into this new chapter in your life where there's going to be plentiness of everything. Not only abundance, not only success, um, but also rich in romance. Now it's going to be up to you, the people that you choose to give your time to. Okay. And the reason I say that is the two of swords is right at the center. And if you are currently dealing with someone, let's say that you you've been dealing with someone for a while, but you're still unsure what it is that they want or what, or what they expect. And you're like, well, we haven't really talked about how things are moving or you know, what we're basically walking towards, but everything seems to be going great. If deep down inside of you, Leo, you feel like at this point, like, are we dating? Are we not? Stop wasting your time. Two of swords is shut the noise. Stop, you know, convincing yourself um, or forcing yourself to believe something. See it for what it is. And your time is valuable, Leo. Your time is, should be appreciated. And if they can't appreciate that, then it's time that you stop ignoring your intuition and walk away from things that are holding you back. Justice card is here to remind you it's going to bring balance and it's going to bring equilibrium to your life, especially your love life. But you have to shut out the noise and make decisions, basically make decisions that you're excited about. If you have a nasty gut feeling about something, pay attention to that because that's going to, it's not going to lead you astray. It's going to take you exactly to where you need to go. With the Empress card here, in regards to future actions, moving forward, again, being very confident is definitely going to give to you a lot of opportunities and it's going to connect you to a lot of potential suitors uh, or people that you may actually be interested in dating and you're going to be able to choose the one that is best for you. But use your discernment in this process, uh, Leo. Now, when we talk about old love or the person from the past, Eight of Swords, Page of Pentacles, and the Three of Wands. Yes, they're missing you, Leo. They're missing you and they regret that they didn't reach out. At this point, there's still desire to want to reach out or mend defenses, but I feel like too much time, at least for them, too much time has passed and I don't see them having the guts or actually stepping up um, and reaching out. It is a miss you from afar, but it's not really taking any type of effort or energy towards connecting with you. All right, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. If you guys are interested in any of the services that we provide, you can find all the descriptions I should say all of the links on the descriptions box below. And you guys definitely stay tuned for the new episodes of the podcast. We have spell work coming through for you guys. 
By the way, I'm going to be teaching you guys a little bit more about planetary magic, so you guys stay tuned for that as well. All right, Virgo, let's see what's going on with you guys. All right, Virgo, when it comes to love or new love, we have Justice card, Two of Cups, and the Five of Cups. Okay, so Virgo, Justice card is a representation of, well, for some of you guys, you may be dealing with a Libra, could be Sun or Red. Um, but I feel like there is an equilibrium that's happening, right? There's this balancing of scales that's happening when it comes to love and romance. And I feel that this is you, Virgo. Um, this is you, Virgo, really like, okay, so I'm going to take it step by step. <clears throat> They're communicating too fast. Okay. So what I'm seeing here is I'm seeing the scale in my third eye, right? And I'm seeing a feather and I'm seeing a stone in each scale. And it's like the scales are balancing. And though you may think that the feather is less or has less weight than the stone, it's in perfect balance. So what this is showing me is that I feel like for a lot of you Virgos, you are taking your power back. And in taking your power back, you are measuring the partner or the people that come into your life that are interested in dating you. And it's like you are measuring them, metaphorically speaking, of course, and you're checking or I should say you're checking off the, the green flags that they have or the red flags. So I see you guys being more conscious and more aware of what you're looking for in a partner and what you're not looking for. And by you guys doing this, what's going to happen is that you're no longer going to hold on to relationships that, because some of you Virgos have a tendency of like staying longer than you should in relationships. And through this process, they waste your time and you let a year or two years go by, what I'm seeing is that now there is almost this awareness about you, Virgo, when it comes to relationships. And you're like, I know what it is that I bring to the table. I know what I want. And if they can meet certain things that I'm looking for in a partner, I'm no longer going to entertain that. So I see you guys being much more I don't want to say sturdy, but like much more to the point uh, when it comes to choosing the partners. One of the things you guys have been working on or perhaps in the past you've kind of experienced is putting up with people that didn't appreciate you, but because of your insecurities or because of things that needed to be healed from you, within you, um, I feel like you were from relationship to relationship experiencing self, self-love and worthiness. So I feel like you guys are coming out of this much more stronger and you're not going to allow people to take advantage of you or you're not going to allow people to um, breadcrumb you anymore and good for you. Because I see you guys more empowered. I see you guys like really, you're dating with purpose now. Like you know what it is that you want and you're not going to settle for anything less. And you're not making excuses anymore for others' shortcomings. So I definitely see you guys like you're going to experience this year a major transition when it comes to your love life because of this, because of this work that you've been putting in. For a lot of you guys, you could be dealing with a Libra could be water energy, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces, um, or earth energy, Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo. Now, when it comes to the old partner from the past, we have the nine of pentacles, the lover's card, and the two of wands. This person is a person that likes to be single. And I feel like even if they're dealing with someone, which more likely they are, because we do have the lover's card here and the two of wands, they're still going to have a wandering eye. So what am I saying? What I'm saying here, Virgo, is you're most definitely going to hear from the partner from the past. And it doesn't mean that they're single. It just means that they want to see if they can still get you. And if you entertain that, that obviously it's not going to lead to anything. 
they're just going to sell you a dream. They're going to sell you what they know that you think, um, but it's not based on reality because they're not capable of giving you the commitment you're looking for. So my advice is walk away from that Virgo. All right, my lovelies, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Libra. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, one of the signs that is going to be experiencing a lot of changes this year as well. North node in, or sorry, south node in your sign, Libra. Let's see what's going on. Three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on, Libra. All right, here we go. All right, Libra. <laughs> what did I just say? death card here major transformation all right we have the knight of pentacles and the chariot card okay in regards to old love we have the seven of seven of pentacles the nine of cups and the queen of pentacles okay so when it comes to new love we have the death card major transformation here obviously pluto's energy as well with the Knight of Pentacles, it's been a journey for a lot of you guys. It's been a process for some of you guys. You're still dealing with a broken relationship, hoping that there could be some type of fixing or some type of coming together. And though the journey has been long, I feel like you're definitely going towards this understanding that things could never go back to the way they were. And for a lot of you guys, you're choosing yourselves. For a lot of you guys, you're embracing, even if you're scared as fuck, and I'm not gonna lie, for some of you guys, this is a scary time because it's so easier for us to go back to what is the past or to what is comfortable um, than, than to dare to go towards a new direction, somewhere we've never been some are surrounded by people we've never dealt with. So that can be a scary transition. However, knowing your worth and knowing that you deserve better and that you have every right to not feel bad about wanting better, you're taking your power back, Libra. And in doing this, you're also raising your standards. You're raising your vibration. And the universe will respond to you with the chariot here, going towards success, going towards something that is more of what you're looking for. For some of you guys, it could be a cancer that's coming in uh, for some of you guys. For others of you, it can represent um, it can represent the the choosing yourself and in doing so, that's where you start to experience this major transition in your love life. Um, so again, it's not about sacrificing yourself no more. It's not about settling or going or bouncing to the past because it's scary, the future. It's about being daring to embrace the future because only through this will you experience success when it comes to love and romance. Now, for those of you guys that are dealing with a person from the past, the seven of pentacles, the nine of cups, and the queen of pentacles, for some of you guys, it could be, again, especially if this story is connected to you, Libra, where you have this relationship that you've been trying to move on from, but it's almost like it. you guys break up, you guys go back with each other, you guys break up, you guys go back. In this transition... For some of you guys, you're getting the news. Some news may be coming to you that your partner got someone pregnant or that they had something going on on the side um, the while entertaining you. And again, with the death card, whether we're ready or not, when transformation happens, it doesn't care if you're prepared or not. It's going to propel, it's going to push you because it's trying to propel you towards your destiny. It's like Libra, no more holding back, no more, you know, creating these fantasies in your head that things are going to work out. It's time to see things for what they really are. And either you keep dealing with the same person that you've been dealing with for the past three years, and you keep dealing with the same shit over and over, 
or you choose yourself, you walk away. And the moment you walk away, Libra, you will hear shit that they were doing in the past or behind your back. And you're going to be like, it's going to feel good and it's going to feel great. Not because of what was happening on the side, but it's going to feel great to know that you found that out, but you were the one that decided to walk away before circumstances pushed you to walk away. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's about self-love here, Libra. It's about doing and thinking for yourself and doing for yourself what is right for you, what makes sense, what, how you want to be treated is what you want and desire in a partner, it's time you start doing that for yourself. And only through that will you be able to bring to you the person that's meant for you, my loves. All right, moving on here. Let's see what's going on here with Scorpio. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Give me three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you guys like these videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Like the video. All right. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go. Scorpio. We have the Justice card, the Two of Swords, and the Temperance card. When it comes to old love, we have the Nine of Pentacles, Queen of Cups, and the Wheel of Fortune. Mm, okay, interesting. All right, Scorpio. So for those of you guys that are dealing with someone, Justice card with the Two of Swords and the Temperance here. Very interesting. What I'm seeing is for some of you guys, you could have made a very hasty decision. For some of you guys, you could have been triggered. <laughs> um, you could have been triggered. You could have been tested in this connection. And I feel like it was a bit scary um, because it was... It had to do with some like some insecurity of yours, Scorpio, that it made you confront that insecurity. And instead of dealing with it, you kind of ran away from it. Um, so if you did not make an irrational decision based on impulse, like blocking the person you were dealing with or perhaps um, cutting them off completely, I feel like you're going to be a bit in your feels about it. And you're going to be like, OK, was this the right thing for me to do? Was I being very judgy or very judgmental? Um, could we have talked it through? Um, so I see that there is a desire to want to reconnect or want to pick up where things were left um, if you are currently dealing with someone. Now, for others of you, uh, especially those of you guys that have been single for a while, I feel like you've used this long enough as a defense mechanism your traumas, what you've experienced in the past, and you kind of kept yourself guarded, you kept yourself um, strong, right? Because you weren't allowing people to come in. I feel like you're coming out of this energy, Scorpio, and you're more willing and you're embracing, giving yourself the opportunity to be happy. And I feel like the moment you start to do this, and especially those of you guys that lately have been thinking about love, um, I feel you're ready and the moment that you realize you're ready, it's like your heart chakra will completely become unblocked and people start to come into your life that are meant to be in your life, Scorpio. For some of you guys, you could be dealing with a Libra or a Sag that may be coming in. Um, but again, this is the, the message here is be willing to embrace the opportunity of making yourself happy, Scorpio, because you deserve it, my love. And... The moment you realize that and the moment you're not so guarded and you give yourself the opportunity because no one deserves to be happy like yourself, Scorpio. So give yourself that opportunity. The moment you do, things start to move. And for a lot of you guys, I feel like your love life starts to take an upswing. Now, when it comes to old love, the nine of pentacles, queen of cups, and wheel of fortune. If you are on the spectrum, uh, Scorpio, where you've been wanting or desiring to hear from the person from the past, I feel like for, for some of you guys, the person you were dealing with in the past recently became single or recently gave, gave themselves enough time to kind of figure things out. So if you guys were dealing with someone and let's just say they felt or they told you they weren't ready for a relationship 
and you guys could have like parted ways or for others of you, maybe you're giving each other some space, some time. I feel like they're coming back around Scorpio and they're ready. Um, I feel like this was something that was needed. Uh, they kind of needed to figure themselves out. They needed to figure out for themselves if the feelings they had for you were deep enough. And the answer to that is yes. And I feel like they're coming back around and they're wanting to pick up where things left off and they're willing to show you through action. So again, if you guys are on the spectrum of hoping to hear from a person from the past, they're definitely coming through and they're wanting to reconnect. You may hear from them the end of this month, the beginning of February. All right, my loves, moving on here. Let's see what's going on here with... Sagittarius, Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with my Saggies. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How are you guys experiencing these uh, transits that are happening? <laughs> Did you guys feel it already? <laughs> We're going to feel a big one on the 20th of January. All right, Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, three cards, new love, three cards, old flame. All right, here we go, Saggy. Your first card here is the Hermit, the Four of Cups, and the Six of Cups. Sorry, the Six of Pentacles. In regards to old love, we have the Nine of Cups, the Death card, and the oof, Tower. Okay. All right, Sagittarius, when it comes to new love, they're seeing you a bit reserved. They're seeing you a bit disconnected. I feel like they, what I heard was standoffish. So for some of you guys, it could be that you're experiencing a bit of, you know, internalizing certain things about the connection or about your partner with the four of cups here in how they feel about you. It could be that you're standoffish because you're feeling like you guys are not as connected as you guys were at some point. It could have been the type of situation where when it starts off, it starts off hot and heavy and it almost feels like you guys are becoming more distant and distant towards each other as time progresses. However, I feel like at the end of the month, uh, future actions that they're taking towards you, six of pentacles, I feel like at the end of the month, they're coming back around Sagittarius and they're telling you, all right, Saggy, like this is not working out. Um, what is it that we need to do to be on the same page? Do we still want the same things? Do we still, you know, want to continue working towards this connection? I feel them being more willing and having the desire to meet your expectations. If not, let's talk about it, Sagittarius, so that we can make it work. So I see them more willing at the end of this month. I do want to say if you're feeling the disconnect, my advice is, don't address it right now. Wait more towards the end of the month because I feel like if you address it right now, they may get overly emotional and they may not give you the reaction you're waiting. So I would hold off to address it more towards the end of the month. This is going to make them more willing and more accepting to hear each other out. Whereas if you try to address it now, they may try to breadcrumb you oh, we'll talk about it later or, you know, but really there, it's going to go in through one year and out the other. So again, I feel them more willing and being willing to put effort more towards the end of the month. Now, for those of you guys that are completely single, I feel like you guys have been going through this journey of self-reflection and uh, for some of you guys could even be healing or maybe getting to a point of feeling like you were just not interested in romance anymore. But I feel like that's going to be changing for you guys more so towards the end of the month, beginning of February. I see people coming towards you and trying to connect, but actually putting effort. For some of you guys, you may get an unexpected invitation for lunch or dinner. Uh, and it may come as in the form of a friend that perhaps opens up to you and actually speaks about feelings that they're having for you, Sagittarius. Now, when we're talking about a person from the past, Nine of Cups, the Death card, and the Tower, I feel that there is this massive energy that they're currently experiencing. Now, when it comes to how they feel about you, they definitely still have feelings for you, Sagittarius. And I feel like for some, they're kind of just realizing that they love you. And when it represents, you know, 
the death card in the position of how or why they feel this way, there was a major transformation or a major revelation that recently happened for them where they're seeing that this was the end all be all type of thing. So if you were wanting or hoping to hear from an ex-partner, though the death and the tower usually indicate, uh, you know, it's a complete ending with the nine of cups, though, I I'm being very pulled towards Yes, you will be hearing from them. Why? Because it barely dawned on them that you're the one they want or that you're the one that they love. So it's some type of self-actualization that's happening in their, in their life. Not sure what they're going through. Could be that they recently went through some type of mourning or some type of loss of someone and it made them realize time is of the essence and made them realize what really matters and what doesn't, what is superficial, and what is the long term. And I feel like they're trying to come back around to really, you know, commit 100% to this. Like I said, I usually don't see that with the death and the tower. However, the nine of cups is here. And the nine of cups in the position of how they feel about you, they're still in love. They're still... um a lot that they want to do in this connection and the death card being the position of how or why they feel this way is because of the transformation that they recently experienced. For some, I'm not going to lie for some of you guys, it could be that they experienced some type of health scare and now they're realizing this is the person I love. I love Sagittarius and I want to make it work and I'm willing to make it work. So again, if you were on the spectrum of those that are hoping to hear from the partner you may definitely hear from them the end of this month, the beginning of February. All right, my lovelies, I hope you guys enjoyed these readings. If you did, like, share, comment, and I will see you guys soon with the next video. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.